kind of like phoenix card versus iron breaker like who wins eh, flip a coin or you'd have to come up with like a very specific scenario Dive, damn it, dive. A lot easier to kill them underwater. Only takes one shot instead of two. Vestigor versus Black Orc? Bitch, what did I just say? <laughs> Flip a coin! Honestly, for Vestigor versus Black Orc, I think it would have come down to who got the charge. If the Black Orc was charging the uh, Vestigor, I think he would come out on top. If the Vestigor was charging the Black Orc, I think he would come out on top. Warp Fire Throwers versus Iron Drakes? Uh, Iron Drakes would absolutely obliterate Warp Fire Throwers. Because Iron Drakes have enchanted um, Gromril that protects them from all forms of flame, including the magical fire of Warp Fire Throwers. Like, they could just walk through it and not even give a shit. Centicores versus Centaurs, you're banned. Squig versus a Jawbreaker? Um, you know when Kirby tries to eat a car in the new game? I think it would just be like that. Swordmaster versus Executioners? Flip a coin. <laughs> if I took these two units that were exact identical opposites, but they're the same species, who would win? <laughs> swordsmen versus Dwarf Warriors? What kind of Swordsmen? Like, Empire Swordsmen? They would get their asses kicked. From, like, a lore standpoint. You would need, you would need something a little he heftier than a Empire Swordsman. They're, they're not going to have a good time versus Dwarfs. Dual Axe Corn Warriors versus Source with Shields. Oh. Hmm. I don't know. My, hmm. My knee-jerk reaction is to say that the Cornates would actually have the advantage just because they're like Chaos Warriors, their armor is like super fucking impressive. Uh, and they're actually like very, very skilled, capable combatants. Um, and are not as um they are they are far more experienced against foes similar to Saurus, who rely much more on, like, natural abilities. Um, like, I, th and, like, that extra juice that they get from corn, um, would really help kind of carry them through the defenses of the Saurus and be able to kind of, like, make up for that predatory savagery that allows the Lizardmen to be so terrifying. I would honestly say the Corn Warriors would come out on top. Though they would, they would, you know, they would take significant losses. Hellpit Abomination versus a Carnosaur, uh, Hellpit would win. 
majority of the time. The, the fact that they're able to regenerate and they can like just literally die and then just bounce back from it um, is pretty fucking significant. Gelt versus Magneto. Uh, Magneto would win. Or uh, sorry, Gelt. Wouldn't Gelt be able like if, if Gelt understood what Magneto's powers were, I feel like he would win because he could literally just transmute everything into a metal that is not magnetic. And then Magneto would be like, oh, fuck. <laughs> but I don't know, like, if you're going with, like, Magneto, like, from the comics, as strong as he can possibly get, Magneto is so fucking absurd to the point that he can manipulate, like, people's magnetic spheres. So, like, at that point, I have no fucking idea. Superman versus Goku. I've been pretty heavily convinced that Superman t wins that handedly. <laughs> I don't know, man. I like, I know a lot of people don't like the death battle guys, but I, I thought that was a pretty convincing duology. <laughs> they were very well made, if nothing else. Are hammers just rune enhanced dwarf warriors? No, 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 no. They are significantly older and uh, not only are they better equipped, not only are they older, they are significantly more skilled. They are the cream, they are the creme de la creme of uh, the dwarven clans. Honestly, it was always massive bullshit to me in tabletop that they only had heavy armor because every single time hammers appear in a story capacity, they have, they have uh, like, it talks about like how amazing and badass their armor is. And then tabletop, they only had a fucking five plus. Like they should have had Gromroll armor. So they were a four up. Then they would have been like way better. Hammers are more proficient than slayers. Yeah, I would say so on average. Like if you were gonna have a slayer that was the equivalent of a hammer, you'd be talking about like at least a dragon slayer. Zargard versus Greatswords. Um, Zargard aren't terribly well established as far as like capabilities and stuff. They're actually a relatively new invention. So I don't know. I would honestly think though that Zargard are probably better fighters. I bet Greatswords are more organized and are more like would do better in a unit versus unit engagement. Oh, is my boat too fat now? Or like too wounded? What's happening? Why is my boat? Oh, there it goes. That was weird. I thought iron drakes or iron breakers were more skilled elite than hammers. Hammers are the, the absolute peak because they're, they're the king's guard. They're responsible for protecting the king or the thane or whatever. Iron breakers are incredibly skilled. Like they, they are insanely well skilled, but they're also uh, much more reliant on their abilities as an individual um, to survive um, like impossible circumstances. No, I'm going the wrong way. Fuck. Go this way. Is there a hammer or fighting school? Uh, no, it's not a fighting school. Um, generally what happens is that when a warrior becomes skilled enough, um, they can basically like apply uh, to be accepted into the hammers, uh, in which case like the knowledge of their deeds and skill at arms will be taken into consideration and they'll either be accepted or denied, though there are cases where a king or a thane will approach someone else uh, and ask them to join the hammers. Um, and once you join it, they go through very strict training regimens and obviously get like superior equipment and stuff like that. Slayer hammers. That's literally just a slayer with a great hammer. Like, but like a good slayer, like a dragon slayer, or maybe a very skilled giant slayer. Demonettes versus witch elves. Uh, my money's on the witch elves. Witch elves are significantly more skilled. Demonettes, 
are are not nearly as elite well maybe not it's not that drastic of a difference but there is a slight difference also a lot of the demonette strength comes from their ability to allure and confuse their opponents and witch elves are so obscenely drugged out of their minds that they are literally immune to that Like that that's literally like going up against someone that's completely and utterly jacked up on like the hardest cocaine imaginable to get into a battle frenzy and you're trying to use like really sophisticated fear tactics on it when they're already in a battle rage. Like it's just it's not worth the effort. Thorgrim would have the best hammers. Yeah, he would. There might be like individual hammers that are more skilled in other holds, but like overall, Thorgrims would be the best, yeah. Just because they have the best equipment. Belagar's hammers would be very, very, very skilled, but they would not have access to nearly as good of equipment. Stench. I love the I love that disrespectful back shot he did. Aren't the Peak Gate Guard literally Thorgrim's hammers? Uh, no, the Peak Gate Guard are from Karagate Peaks. They're from, they're from Belagar's DLC. Oh, don't sink, don't sink, don't sink. Okay, here we go. Yeah, the Everguard are Thorgrim's, yeah. PK guard or Carrick Norn? That may be true. I don't I don't I don't remember what the what they're sourced from. You'd have to go look at their lore blurb. They're Kirk Norn, okay. I'm so sick of smuggler caches, oh my god. Ungrim's hammers must have excellent stamina. That's very likely. Though Ungrim is Ungrim is known to join slayers in battle, much to the chagrin of his uh those that are duty bound to protect him. I should find a boat that'll stay afloat. She's been with us this far. We carry on. I don't mean to pry, but the modding discord is still having arguments on what's considered lore. There's no reason. There, there's literally no, that's like arguing what is art. Are you gonna feed her? I uh, appreciate that, thank you. Huh? Oh, she's already, two walks today, okay. You're gonna be tired. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Wow, okay, she's gonna be fucking exhausted. Damn. Yeah, because I walked her this morning. The big walk. Well, yeah, no, it's fine. She'll be fine. Nope, get, nope. Get off my boat. Get off my boat. You can attack me, but not the boat. Ah. Oh my god, there's so many. Chat, I'm scared. If Ungern died, would his hammers take the Slayer Oath? Probably. 
Even though he would be very upset about it and forbid them to, they would do it anyway, knowing dwarves. Name the boat our hopes and dreams. Uh, that doesn't bode super well. How do revification crystals work? Why can't they be used to resurrect the slot? Okay, so there's kind of a two-pronged answer to that. The first answer is that rev crystals are not a thing in the lore. Uh, Creative Assembly made those up. Though they do have a really interesting, like, explanation for them. That, that certainly has its potential from a lore standpoint. Um... Basically, what their explanation is, is that the Rev Crystals are, they are like, mm, they're like crystals that contain the energy that are utilized in the spawning pools to create new generations of Lizardmen. So basically, the spawning pools are exactly what they sound like. They're these pools that are located around Temple Cities and also underneath the Temple Cities where all of the lizardmen that will ever exist are kept as like impossibly tiny little specks you know little eggs or seeds or whatever you want to call them and yeah it's old one tech and when the proper alignment happens there's basically some sort of pre-programmed system that activates and releases um a cluster of these eggs um that this spawning pool then causes them to uh, develop fairly rapidly. Uh, and well, they, they become tadpoles, but like, and you would see tadpoles when you're looking in because they like, they evolve all the way up. Um, but you wouldn't just see nothing but tadpoles and like the tadpoles are all the lizardmen that have ever, ever that are ever going to exist from that particular spawning pool. Um, tadpole is like along that life cycle. Um, but eventually, they evolve all the way up into being fully formed lizard men uh, and they will emerge from the spawning pools fully formed knowing everything that they need to know to perform their role um, so they emerge knowing how to talk how to communicate how to fight if they're an artisan they know whatever skills they need for that if it's a skink priest they already know innately how to wield the winds of magic um, etc etc uh, if they have the blessed spawning of Itzel, then they're, they emerge already knowing how to ride on cold ones. All that kind of stuff. Uh, okay, I think the best thing to do... Uh, I really want to get this these two, so I guess we could just go all the way around. Fine. Going this way. Though, if I go this way, I could pick up a new boat that is not on its last legs. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's go get a functioning boat. Which old one fertilized the spawning pools? I'm not going to dignify that with an answer. It was rig. Wait, where am I going? Oh, okay, I gotta get I gotta get around these islands. All right. Any clue to where the old ones went? Uh, yeah, they died. Though there is speculation um, that one of them might still be around, but like imprisoned by the dark gods. But whether or not that's true is highly contentious why doesn't new bone ripper need a brain rat uh because he was uh his creation was mostly headlined by screech vermin king himself and screech vermin king is really fucking good at what he does oh there goes our hope and dreams chat oh seven or f whichever you prefer Look, new hopes and dreams. We've abandoned one hope for another. 
Just like real life. I'm still being chased. <laughs> Leave me alone. Okay, let's go sell a bunch of shit. I don't weigh a million pounds. His long search for Siri led Geralt to conclude that Uma, the ugliest man alive and the victim of a curse, was the key to finding the young woman. What do I think of Drekki Flint? I cannot remember what book he's from. I know, I know he's an Arcanaut or a, a Caradron Overlord character, but I'm, I cannot remember what book he's actually from. Okay, where's, wait, where? Oh my God, I'm so turned around. Where am I? Where am I? Wild hunt, take them all. Okay, here we go. Fergus, give me your money. Anything interesting I can buy? Not really. So long. Have I ever considered becoming a lore master? For no, I don't have the time, dude. Need some. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Oh, oh you got eight thousand gold. Nice. Uh, so much better. Oh, these actually weigh stuff. Yeah, I don't need this many. I didn't realize these actually had weight. In here carrying around like a thousand of them. Yeah, I'll keep like 10. Worst case scenario, I can always buy more. Still heavy as fuck. Oh, the runes also weigh. I'm carrying way too much. Oh my god. Please. Everything's so heavy. Why is Geralt's face so messed up? Uh, because I have a lot of venom in my veins right now. So I can carry more shit. <laughs> Mainly. Okay, that's so much better. How does Felix manage to survive consistently drinking with dwarves? Uh, he usually drinks very little or he gets insanely smashed and passes out. Because luckily you can't keep drinking till you die if you pass out. It's 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 a it's a little known cheat code, but it, it works quite well. Led Geralt to conclude that Uma, the ugliest man alive and the victim of a curse, was the key to finding the young woman. But like, dude, just go go look at the comment section of the video I put out today, and how like angry some people are. 
that I was not fully aware of very little known tiny snippets of lore from like the 1980s and 2006 and also a single white dwarf article from I think like 2003 like little, just those little things that I missed you think I got time to like learn whole other universes when like there are people getting that salty over me missing like about five or six sentences worth of dialogue or um, lore from over a decade ago, over two decades ago or four decades ago in some cases. Yeah, no. As far as I'm concerned, Warhammer Fantasy is by far like the most convoluted lore ever. It's such a fucking mess. Just because it's so long and there's so many retcons and there's so many authors and those assholes just had to write a bunch of fucking lore in White Dwarfs, which you can't buy anymore. And they're nearly impossible to find. Even finding PDFs of them can be very difficult. Much less just having the time to read through all that shit. Wonder how people managed to scrap together all those ancient texts. Uh, in a lot of cases, they were alive during that time. Um, also, they did a lot of research about a really specific pinprick. Like, if you came to me and you were like, Hey, Sotek, I want to know everything that ever existed in Warhammer on this particular topic. And it's like a fairly niche topic. Like, it would take me a while, but I would find a, I could probably find a lot of really, really specific information. Now, the vast majority of it would probably be like super out of date or would not like mesh well with the Warhammer Fantasy universe we have now, which is a universe that Games Workshop actually started putting in effort to make make sense across itself with like well-established boundaries and rules instead of just throwing whatever shit at the wall would stick, which was definitely their strategy prior to that. It's like, were, were the modders, like, is it totally fair game for a mod wanting to go over the, the Famir to use the first ever Famir character ever released in 1988, uh, Mother Scottok as a legendary lord? Yeah, no, that's totally fair. Am I still going to criticize it because I don't think it's a good decision because the character's name is super obnoxious considering that the Famir is supposed to be based on the Fomorians and Scottok can only be based on Skaha, who is the opposite of a Fomorian. Um, yes, I think that's like borderline offensive to the original mythology that they're supposed to be based on. And also like, I'm still gonna criticize that Mother Skatok is supposed to be a matriarch and yet she's way too fucking small to be a matriarch by modern Famir standards. Like, I would still say the exact same criticisms that I had. I just should have leveled them at the correct people, and I was an idiot and leveled them at the mod makers instead, which was stupid of me. And I feel terrible about that. So they have every right to criticize me. And they have also every right to be like, yeah, well, your interpretation of the lore is bullshit, and ours is better. And I can't disagree with them, because it's subjective. Oh, that's a big bear. Oh, there's more bears. <laughs> Sorry, bear. Urson? Eh. 